Cheers. I'm Jenny. I own Vango Artist Bar and the Go Box, and uh, I have been painting for about 25 years, and I've taught a lot of kids over the years, a lot of adults, but I really, I love teaching both, but I really love teaching kids. And uh, I've been artist in residence at a couple grade schools, and that was a lot of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. But today, we are going to paint a colorful panda, which I'll bring in front of the screen here. So this panda is super adorable, and sometimes when I've taught it um, over the years, so I've taught this at our studio, Vango, in Portland uh, several times. Sometimes I'll end up with part of the panda eye, uh, second eye showing, and sometimes I end up where he, it's just sort of creeping off to the side here. I do like this this look. When Anytime you can skip having to paint another eye, it's a little easier. So I think we'll try and go for this, but if you end up having to put another eye on, it's not that big of a deal. You can go ahead and do that. So let's take a look at what colors we should have on our palettes. Now, a lot of you guys ordered our kit online, which comes with all the paint and the canvas. And uh, let's look. So I have, a, black is the color I have mostly out of all these colors. I, I uh, because the whole background is done with black. And then of course white, the, re the second use, used color is white. And then these three colors, I almost gave myself too much, but those are just accent colors. So those are those fun colors that we add to make our panda go from a regular panda to a party panda. So brushes, let's talk about brushes real quick. I'm gonna move this aside. I will keep putting it back here just to show you and reference some different things. So there's lots of different brushes you can use. You can use your own, you can buy what we have in the kit, and depending on uh, what's inventoried at the moment, you might have our standard kit, which is the large brush, which when I teach kids, I call it the dad brush. Then the middle size brush is a number eight flat brush, and I call that the mom brush. And then we have the little itty bitty baby brush. So that's the one that will do detail work. We don't use this one very much in this whole painting. So uh, those three sizes, but tonight, just to show you how it can be different and sometimes we might use different brushes depending on what's in stock, I'm gonna use this set. So I have this sponge brush, which is kind of cool. I'll be able to cover the background with that. And it's really about the same size as this one. And then I have a number eight round. Ugh, it's rolling away. And I'll use that a lot for a lot of the work on the panda. And then I have the number six round, which I'll probably use to paint the eyeball in any of the detail work that I have. So I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna use these ones. You might have different brushes, but as long as you have a small, medium, and a large, or a mom, dad, and baby, <laughs> you'll be just fine. So let's, uh, let's talk about what else we need to do this painting. I always like to cover the table with something like newspaper or I have this brown paper uh, just to protect the surface. It's really easy to get paint in different spots where you don't want paint. And then I have an old mug or an old cup that you can use for uh, your brush cleaning water. Now, this is an old Van Gogh mug that I have and you can see the handle shaped like an ear, which I thought was kind of fun. And then you'll want to have a paper towel or some kind of old rag. I've used either, I have some old washcloths that sometimes I use. Just make sure it's okay with your parent. And that paper towel works just fine. And then for a palette, these are some special palettes we sell online and in the studio. I think they're, I wanna say they're around $6, five or $6 for the whole 50 sheet palette. And the other thing you can use, like these are just basically wax paper. You could tear off a little sheet of wax paper. You could use a paper plate, um, pretty much whatever item you have, like a plastic plate that you don't really care about anymore. You can definitely use that as a palette. So that's what we need. We need our canvas, our three brushes, our water cup, our paper towel or rag in our palette. So I'll tell you guys some fun factoids about pandas as we go along. This is one of my favorite paintings to do. I've taught it lots of times. And um, along the way, I, I like to, to research really lame little facts about whatever, I'm, whatever creature I'm painting just to make it a little more fun. And so you have a little bit of a learning experience. But let's uh, first, let's stretch our fingers out. So I'm gonna just move my fingers around. Maybe I'll, 
go like this. Wiggle them around. We're gonna wake these fingers up because we're gonna be using them for about an hour. Okay, and then let's take our whatever biggest brush you're using, whether you're using a brush brush or a sponge brush, go ahead and dip it in water. So this is dad brush. We're giving dad a little wake up call. He's getting a cold water bath this morning. And go ahead and dry the brush really good or the sponge, whatever you're using on your paper towel or rag. So it should be just slightly damp, like kind of how the way your, <laughs> I squeezed some water out. Kind of the way your hair feels after you've taken a shower or bath and you've wrapped it in a towel for a while and it's not dry, but it's not dripping wet. So let's take and dip this brush in the black paint. And my goal here is I'm gonna cover the whole entire canvas with black. You can go up and down, you can go side to side, you can go loop-de-loo, -loo, whatever helps you get to the point where you have the whole entire canvas covered. And I'm just putting a thin coat of paint on because the black uh, is just the background. We need it to dry semi quickly so we can get started on painting the panda on without our panda turning too gray. Because as we know, maybe some of you guys know that if you mix white paint with black paint, you get gray. It's okay to have a little gray on our panda. For the most part, they are white and black. Pretty simple colored creatures. Back and forth, up and down. I just try to get every little corner. You can always put a second coat of paint on if you feel like it wasn't quite thick enough. Up and down, this one makes a lot, the sponge one is kind of fun. It makes a lot of funky scraping noises. It's a noisy brush. There, that, actually I covered that pretty fast. I think this sponge brush helped a lot. So you guys keep working on getting the front covered, the whole canvas covered. I have painted this painting so many times. In fact, I taught it last night on camera and we realized halfway through that the camera had stopped. So tonight is my redo night. I'm doing it a second time. This is take two. So you might have a really dark black opaque cover coverage, which uh, opaque means you can't really see through and see the canvas. Or it might be more on the slightly transparent side where you can kind of see through it. And I've noticed with this sponge brush, it kind of does that a little bit. It almost looks like a really cool wood grain. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna wash my brush out or my sponge brush. Just kind of tap it around on the bottom of the cup. You guys keep working because I'll cover my canvas a little faster than a lot of you guys will. So take your time. I'm going to talk about pandas for a little bit while you're working. So keep working and keep covering the front of your canvas. If you're done already, if you're one of those speed painters, you can take some time and paint the sides of the canvas and the, the bottom edge and the top edge so that when you hang it up on the wall, which I hope you all do, it will look really nice all the way around on all sides. So, wow, there was a lot of black paint and water to come out of this sponge brush. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna put it aside. You guys keep working and I'm gonna tell you some fun stuff about pandas and I'll show you some drawings I did last night. A couple pandas, I bet a lot of you guys recognize this one. I got started with it and I thought, this looks like Jack Skellington. So I just had a creative moment and I turned it into a uh, Jack Skellington panda because why not? We've never seen a Jack Skellington panda and in the art world, you can make up your own creatures. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I'll talk about these drawings in a minute, but I wanna tell you some funny stuff I found out about pandas. So I usually like to research a little bit when I am teaching a creature, like I said earlier. And I think the, the thing you guys will like the most and will make you laugh the most <laughs> is that 
one thing I learned online, thanks to the internet, is that an adult panda can poop 61 pounds of poop a day, which is, that is a huge amount of poop. And all they eat for the most part is bamboo and maybe sometimes fruit. They've been known to eat some meat, but usually it's just fruit and like probably mostly bamboo. And so I was reading a little bit about this fact number five that in, oh no, wait, no, it was fact number six that a panda can poop 61 pounds a day, or it's 21 kilos per day, but when you do the math, it ends up being around 61 pounds. And uh, in the past, so years ago, um, the undigested bamboo pieces in the poop, which there's probably a lot, because it probably doesn't all get chewed up, were often used, uh, they were made into picture frames or bookmarks, and apparently they didn't stink, but I can't imagine having your school picture framed in a panda poop frame. <laughs> I think that would be, well, that would be a conversation piece, that's for sure. And uh, I thought that was probably the funniest fact about pandas. One other thing, pandas like to be alone. They're kind of loners. They're a little more solitary and they don't like roam in packs or anything. They don't hibernate like regular bears do. So in the winter, they just actually travel down the mountains for warmer weather. And they have six toes. So six toes enables them to be able to climb and grasp bamboo. So they've got that one extra digit, which we are stuck with five fingers and five toes on each hand and foot. So they have a little, little edge. I would really like to have a sixth digit. I think I could do a lot more cool art if I had an extra digit. So all of these fun facts I found, there's like, there's like 10 facts, 10, 11 facts about pandas. Um, I found on chinahighlights.com slash giant panda. So I'll try to remember to put the link in the bottom that you can click on. It's kind of fun. It shows a bunch of really cute pictures of pandas. And it talks about like what color they are when they're born. They're kind of a pinkish color, uh, a furless pink. And then, which doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> and then uh, just the, the little facts and pictures. And it's really cute. So I was trying to see if there was, I knew there was one other thing I wanted to tell you about that their weight, they're pretty big. A lot of people think of pandas as being like a small, cute thing you can pick up. But the adult pandas weigh like 100 pounds, so they're pretty heavy, and you probably can't pick them up. I don't know if they would be cuddle cuddle pandas at all. I don't know what it would be like to uh, sit next to a panda, because I never have. So hopefully by now all my talking has allowed your canvas to, for, allowed you to finish painting it black, and also allowed it to dry a little bit. But before we get moving on, I'm going to move my palette aside, and I'm going to talk to you about panda faces. So last night when I was doodling around, I showed how a lot of times with when I'm painting it or drawing a panda, I do a round face. And then sometimes you can do kind of a, a fat pear shaped face and it still looks really cute. This one reminds me a lot of like Kung Fu Panda, like Poe. Actually, Poe's, it's been a long time. My kids are older, so it's been a long time since I watched those movies. Maybe he does have more of a round face. Um, but their eyes are, the reason I drew the Jack Skellington one is because their eyes remind me of that. They're kind of like these oval shapes that are tilted inward. So sometimes when I'm drawing a panda, I think about that. I don't think about, oh, I'm drawing a panda face. I think, no, I'm drawing a Jack Skellington face. And that makes me make the eyes like that. And then um, the ears are always just little half circles. They have cute little round ears on either side of their head. And then the ears are black. So they have this cool pattern thing going on where it's like black ears, white face, black circles around the eyes, black body, white belly, black legs. They're really cute. I don't know how many times I've said that. I think that you guys probably realize I think pandas are really cute. Um, for the eyes, I will usually make a circle when I'm drawing a panda. I'll usually make a circle inside the oval and then I'll color the black around that circle. I'm just gonna be kind of fast and sloppy here. And you see already it looks more panda-like. 
And the reason I'm showing you this is because we are going to be drawing a lot of this on our canvas in just a little bit. So I'm just sort of giving you a little uh, pre-show of how this is put together. And then their nose, I drew a, a bigger version here. It's kind of like, at first it looks like a little gentle smile, like your panda's semi-amused. And then underneath it goes down and it rounds down almost like you've got this funky little boat shape or like a bowl shape. I think of it like either way works, whether you think of it as a bowl or a boat, either one works. That gets colored in with black later on. They have a black nose. So I'll draw that on this little guy down low, about like that. So right now it looks like a panda that's laughing, but in reality that's his nose and we haven't drawn the mouth yet. So that would be fine. It'd be kind of like a, a little uh, cute um, cartoon panda. But I'm gonna draw the mouth and I always just draw a little short straight line, kind of like when you draw a cat or dog mouth and it just curls up on either side. And there we go, very simple panda. And I make a shoulder on either side. They're they're kind of husky, they're a little chubby. So we wanna make sure that they, they don't have like a neck. They're, they're chubby and cute. And I'll show you that when we paint paint the panda in, but I wanted to give you a little, a little uh, tutorial on how the face is drawn and you guys can use pen or pencil and draw your own, maybe practice. It's really fun. I do love uh, drawing cartoon shapes and that's pretty much what we're going to do here, but it's going to be on canvas. So have a look at your canvas. It'll probably be a little bit glossy, which means it's not a hundred percent dry yet. That's okay. If it's really, really glossy and you've put your paint on really thick and it's not dry yet, have your parent help you use a hairdryer and dry it for like 30 seconds and you'll be ready to go. Like most of us, your, your canvas, if it has a few glossy spots, that's okay. We'll probably start with, with some spots that are wet. So let's take a look at our original here. So we have this half circle face, very round. This is, yeah, Kung Fu Panda. That's what it reminds me of. And then the little half circle ear and then the shoulder. So the shoulder is not like way down here. It's way out here to give him that sort of chubby look, the adorable chubby panda look. And when I teach the panda to keep the kids and, and adults painting it right, I have us, we're actually gonna turn our canvas this way and we're gonna paint like a moon, like a half moon that's rising up. Like here's the, the horizon of the earth and the moon's kind of rising up. We're gonna think of it that way first and less, don't think of it as a head, think of it more like a moon coming up and that will kind of eliminate any anxiety you might have about painting the head. The cool thing is because we're using black, if you draw the head and you think, oh, I don't like it, I did a really not so great job and I, I'm stuck with it, you're not stuck with it. Dry it up with the hair dryer or wait for it to dry, put me on pause, and then cover it with black, dry that up or let it dry and come back and start over. So brushes, let's talk about brushes. If you're using a set of brushes like these where I've got the two flats and the little baby round brush, we'll be using our middle size brush. If you've got this set or something similar, I'm gonna be using my middle round brush, which is number eight the mom brush. So this is how I will sketch my panda out. I want to give mom a quick little bath in the water and then dry the brush off. Your water is probably kind of grayish. Don't worry about that. That's totally fine. One thing I like to do is when I first wet the brush and I dry it off, I like to kind of twist the bristles and make them real pointy together. So you get this nice sharp point and you're starting with a nice clean sharp edge to your brush. So let's turn the canvas because when right now, instead of thinking about painting a panda, we're gonna be thinking about painting a big half moon that's rising. And it's, it goes out pretty close to halfway, maybe a little further. So don't make one that's real tiny. We wanna kind of make it nice and big so we have a nice big panda face to work with. So let's dip this middle sized mom brush in white. And we're gonna make a couple marker points. So let's find the bottom left corner. And I want you to move inward about maybe an inch and a half to two inches and make a mark. So just kind of eyeball it. And then on this side about the same amount, just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact. I'll make another mark. So that's I know where my, my head's gonna round out. 
And then some of you may, maybe you want to make a mark about the middle of the canvas so you know where your destination is. Like I don't want you to go too shallow. I want you to go a little further out close to the middle of the, of the canvas. And then I'm just, I'm going to make sure I do a roundish shape and I'm just going to dot it out. There we go. Got half of it done. And then maybe it's easier to go from this point upward or from this point down, whatever works best for your brain. We all have different ways of approaching it. That looks pretty good. To me, it looks like the moon rising up from the horizon. And it's not a perfect circle by any means, and it doesn't have to be. So we're good. Now I'm gonna turn my canvas back and I can see how it looks. And I wanna dip my brush in white again. And let's go ahead and sketch out a little half circle for the ear. It can be large or small. A little too large, it might look kind of Mickey Mouse-ish, Mickey Mouse-ish, so I sort of leave it in between small and large, it's medium. And then I do like to sketch a little inner ear. So it's just a mini version of this. So far, so good. And let's talk about the shoulder. So the shoulder is this part. We just have a little glimpse of it. It goes off the canvas. And you can see it, it starts, it comes out of the panda's head like right after this curves downward. I don't want it way down here or he's gonna look too skinny. So if I put it way down here, that's a little too thin. So I'm gonna put it out about here and I'll just make a dot, have a look at it. Yeah, that looks about right. And then I'm just gonna dot it out, rounding down to the bottom of the canvas. There, nice chubby panda shape. And that works just fine for me. And hopefully yours works just fine for you. They look funny at first, but as we add detail and fur and all the little things that we add to it, they come together really nicely. So now let's talk about the eyes. Let's take a look. I think most of us are probably only going to be able to fit the eye that's on this side. Like I've told you in the beginning, sometimes I've painted it and I end up being able to put a hint of another eye there, but for the most part, I just end up with the one eye showing. So remember, we're gonna do that sort of oval shape that's tilted. So it's in the upper part of the face. I'll just make a dot it out because you can paint over it with black and start again. And I'm not pressing very hard with my brush, just light little taps. Something you can paint over if needed and start again. So there's my, it's about the size of a medium sized potato and about that shape too. And then we're gonna leave the circle part of this black. We can paint more black in it later if you need to, but for now, just leave it as it is. And let's talk about the nose. I'll bring this one over here. So here I've got like half of a nose because the other half is off here somewhere. He's a, he's a shy panda. Maybe he's peeking out behind a tree. So I do that sort of gentle, like semi-humored smile. And then I go around underneath to make that boat shape or bowl shape, whatever helps you visualize it. But they're, their nose is pretty far down. Let me bring this back over. It's pretty far down from their eye because they do have this big part here that bumps out. This is called the snout. You can make the nose closer up here and it will look fine. It'll just look a little more cartoony. So don't worry about that if you get your nose placed up a little higher than mine. But for this one, I'm just gonna do it right about here and I just start like I'm doing a, a little semi-humor smile. And that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> And then from there, I'm gonna round down like I'm making half of a boat or half of a bowl. There we go. That works for me. We're gonna leave that there for now. We'll come back and add lots of fun stuff to it. But now I want to get us started on the fur. The fur is really fun and fluffy and over the years I've seen a lot of people Kids and adults make super fluffy, long-haired pandas, or maybe the hair is more spiky. It just depends on how you hold your brush and how you uh, like to paint and uh, you know what feels comfortable to you. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna take our mom brush again, dip it in white again. And we should all be ready. You can always pause me if I'm going, a little, feels like I'm going a little too fast. You can pause and catch up and then start right back up here. So at the top of the head, 
I'm going to start flicking out into the background with my little brush. I'm not pushing very hard, just a quick little flick. And I'm going to put some fuzzy hair across the top of the head. And I don't, you can go, I don't usually like to just go straight up and down. I'll sometimes make some, like the wind's blowing it. Some are going this way, some are going this way. Some are smashed and leaned over. He's probably not like a super combed out, perfectly manicured, groomed panda. <laughs> they live out in the wild. So there's probably, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of volunteers to brush a panda every day, but I'm sure a lot of, a lot of times the panda doesn't get brushed. So I've got the top of the head. You can always add more. You can always make the hair longer. Your painting, you get to make your panda however you want. So then I'm gonna continue around the ear. Now the hair that I'm drawing on the ear, it's just sort of curving curving out into the background and going around and down. About like that. So far, so good. And then there is hair that goes along here, kind of flicks upward into the inner part of the ear, along the side of the face and all the way down to the chin. So I'm gonna keep going. Flick, flick, flick. These little hairs probably tickle the inner part of the bear's ear. And the same thing like up here. I'll do some maybe that are going flicked all different directions. Like the wind is blowing, the hair's a little wild, or the fur, I should call it fur instead of hair. All of this is going to get covered with white, except for the eye and the nose, so... If you come down in here further, it's no biggie. And then as I go along the face, the hair is going to kind of curve downward. So think about like if you have a dog or a cat at home, you can kind of look at them and see how their hair grows. Their hair sort of grows at a downward pattern and like it's going to curve down this way. I'll show you all of that. So I'm going to start here. Curving slightly downward, but every once in a while, make a rogue hair that flicks outward. Why not? They can have some rogue wild hairs. He's climbing the bamboo trees and pooping 61 pounds a day. He's a wild panda. Right now, he just kind of looks like he's got um, Elvis, the Elvis hairdo with the big sideburns <laughs> and then I'm going to come down around the chin you can make long hair or short hair just have fun with it I love painting hair took me a while to love it though it's at first when you're first starting painting it can be a little frustrating as you get the hang of it and then pretty soon after you've done it a bit it comes naturally and you don't even really have to think about it too much Okay. Sassy Panda. Now I'm gonna do the shoulder and the hair's gonna pretty much grow out and down just following the curve of the shoulder. You can, again, you can make spiky hair, long hair. You could even make wavy hair, why not? Maybe you want your panda to match you if you have curly hair. Do swirly curlies with your panda fur. That looks pretty good. He looks very strange right now. He's strange, but looking like, starting to look a little more like Panda. Great. Again, remember, if I'm going too fast, put me on pause. I can catch up. So now what I want to do, I've got the hair that goes all the way around and all the way down the shoulder and all the way around the ear. And remember yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. My two, I can pretty much guarantee you they're gonna look very different from each other. And keep in mind, I've also been painting for like 25 years. So, and I've done this painting so many times that it's gonna come easy for me and it might be a little harder for you and that's okay. 
Every time you're very first starting painting, and especially painting a new subject that you haven't painted before, it's gonna be a little bit of challenge, but challenge is really good for our brain. So we wanna make sure that we're okay with that. And your panda, you just work it till you like it. So I'm gonna take my brush again, same brush. And here's what I wanna do. I wanna go around this circular or oval shaped eye, and I'm gonna create a fur border around it because we're gonna use a little bit bigger brush to do this, to, to fill in the major part of the panda. So what I'm doing now is kind of what I used to do when I was a kid and I would paint in color books. I would sort of border off areas that I knew I didn't wanna paint into. I don't know if all kids did that. I might've just been like <laughs> overthinking it. <sighs> But it worked. There. Wow, that looks a little bit scary. <laughs> He's a creepy panda. I could use this mom brush. This worked really well. I could use this brush to fill in all of the panda. You could use your little sponge brush. It tends to hold a lot of paint pigment though, so I think it's probably gonna turn a little uh, gray. So I am gonna use this brush. I'm gonna use Mom. I felt real comfortable with Mom brush. If you are using this set, you can use the Mom brush on that set, or you can use the Dad brush, whatever, whatever's feeling good to you today. On the nose, let's go ahead and under this part, we're gonna do what we did around here. We're gonna kind of border it off. It's gonna look like he has a mustache. In fact, while we're here, let's go ahead and bring this furry brush stroke out and cover the whole chin area. We're gonna have to do it anyways, so we might as well do it now. Wow, it's kind of a little bit creepy right now. <laughs> It'll climb out of that. It'll start looking really good. Now for the snout, let me pull this original over here. That I, oh, well, it's, it's the one I did. It's not the original original, but it's the one I did last night. Their snout is, it's this area. So this is the nose and this whole area, I think they would consider that the snout. And it, it is sort of curved. If you were to pet one, kind of like if you look at your dog or even your cat, they have a little tiny one, if you have a dog or cat, it does, their nose snout area kind of curves like that. So I like to make my brush strokes do that because then it just sort of gets the texture going in the right direction. So first above the, the top line of the nose, I'm just gonna fill a little space in like so. And when I get maybe half an inch or so away from the top edge of the nose here, then I'm just gonna start curving. And this can start right about the inner, lined up with the inner corner of the eye here. Kinda looks like a snow yeti right now. So I'm gonna come up in between where the two eyes would be, so my other eye would be over here, but we're gonna pretend there's a tree and our panda's being shy or playing peekaboo and hiding partially behind the tree. And again, you might have part of the other eye showing here, depending on how big your panda's head ended up, but most of the time we end up with just one eye showing. All right. So I've got these sort of curved brush strokes. You can see a little bit of the black canvas underneath, which I love. It's why I started with a black canvas because this is giving you like automatic shading that you didn't even have to shade in there. It's just because it's black underneath and you're painting white on top. So it's a really cool thing that's kind of unintentional. So now, right as I'm up here, I'm gonna take my brush and flick this hair up. I'm just doing short, quick little 
flicking motion. So if you look at your, if you do have a dog or cat or, you know, if you, even if you don't, if you want to look at one online, you can see there, this is the direction that their hair grows in between their eyes. It's growing upward toward the top of their head. Flick, flick, flick. We're going to meet up with this. We want them to blend together. So you might even overlap this a tiny bit. Wow, it's kind of coming together, but still looking a little bit creepy. So now, I'm gonna slide it this way a little bit. Now I've got this area from the snout on up to the middle of the forehead filled in. And then as we go around here, our hair or fur, fur direction is gonna go upward and it's gonna, by here, by this point, it's gonna be going outward and slowly, gradually get to the point where down along the cheeks, it's gonna be going downward. So here I go, going up towards the ear, overlapping the edge a little bit. I really like this brush, it works great for this. So I wouldn't use this one. I think this is gonna be a little overkill and plus I think that it uh, holds holds a bit too much of the color. If you were to take it, have your mom or dad wash it out in the uh, sink and clean all the black paint out, you can use it again. So now I'm gonna start flicking the hair this way. It's looking good. So you'll see some gray poking through because of the black background and black and white together make gray. We want that. We It gives it a very cool texture without working super hard to get the texture. So you can see my brush strokes now are starting to go out to the side. And now as I get down in here, they're gonna be going downward. Last little area, this little cheek area. Flick, 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 flick. Down to the last little spot. You guys may not be quite here yet, and that's okay. Just take your time. In the studio, when I'm up on the stage teaching kids, I can hop down off the studio and walk around and see if anyone needs help and see, you know, comment on people's paintings. So it, it does buy me a little bit of time. So I'm not like rushing everyone through. But on the video, I don't have anybody to hop down and look at their paintings. So I just sort of have to figure you'll pause me if needed. And uh, any spot that you feel like needs a second coat, like maybe it's looking too gray or black in any one area, pop a little more white paint on there if needed. But we do want some of the grayish color poking through just to give it some texture and shading. There, it already looks like a panda, which is awesome because that's what we're going for. I'm gonna set this brush down for just a second. We don't need to wash it because we're gonna use it with some white on it in a minute. But I want to, gosh, that looks so cute, I love it. I'm gonna pull this one over here. And I wanna talk to you real quick about shading. So we don't do a lot of shading on this painting, it's kept very, very simple. The only place that I do have some shading is right 
here. And the reason I did shading that starts under the eye and it just goes along till it gets to about the nose is because the spots that you shade make the spots next to it that are still bright white look like they pop out. And that's exactly how a panda face would be in three dimensional, um, in 3D it would be, it would, this would round out and this would be a little further back. So that's what the shading does for us. But we wanna mix kind of a light shading color. So I know it looks purple on here because I added purple later, which we'll do. And I'll show you how to do that. But I, I started with kind of a light medium gray. So we've already got white on our brush. And I bet you guys know, a lot of you, that the two colors that make gray are black and white. So I'm gonna pull a little white aside, plop some down here, and then I'm gonna put maybe half as much black. I always start with just a little bit of black because I know I can gradually add more. And the black tends to overpower the color so it makes it really dark really fast. So a nice medium gray, not too dark. Dark would be like charcoal gray. And not too light. Light would be like, I don't know, you guys, if you've ever seen what an oyster looks like, but they're inside their shell, they're like really, really pale gray. We don't want it quite that light because that's almost white. I think this color I made is about right. And even if this is wet, it's gonna work just fine. In fact, blending wet on wet paint together is great. So I'm gonna take and shade under the eye. Looks like he, he missed a couple days of sleep. Got some dark circles going on. And in fact, you can dot out that we want this to go along to the nose like that. So, you know, if it helps you to dot out a line, do that. And this really is shaped a lot like a tornado. It goes from a small point up to a larger area here. It's a twister. And you maybe did a darker gray, that's okay. I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that you can use for any painting. So my gray is a little, maybe slightly darker than I want it to be, but that's all right. I'm gonna show you something. So I'm gonna take my gray mom brush, middle size brush, wash it off. Kind of brush it around on the bottom of the cup real lightly. You don't wanna push too hard so you don't wanna fray your brush. We wanna be able to use these for future paintings. Go ahead and dry it off. And I'm gonna dip this brush in white paint. And while this is still wet, I'll brush it right into the edges here. And what that does, you can kind of see, it sort of smooths out the edges. And it makes that transition color look a little more gradual. It's kind of like we're just glazing a bit over the gray to make it more subtle. That already looks way better. So we're using acrylic paint and it dries really fast as you guys have probably already experienced. If we were using oil paint, which is a different type of paint that's obviously made with oil, it doesn't dry right away. Sometimes it takes up to six months to dry. So what we're doing right now is what is called a wet on wet painting. So we're painting wet paint on top of wet paint and it sort of forces it to blend together in a really cool way. And that's how you get that really blended shading. But you have to work kind of quick. So with acrylic paint, you can do that. If you work quick, you can absolutely do it. All right, you wash the brush off. So if you need to touch up any part of this or this, this is where you'd take your black paint and uh, go, go inside the eye part and maybe clean up any, any spots where maybe you got a little white intruded into this area or you need to clean up the edge or anything, you can do that. We're gonna paint the eyeball in in a little while. We're gonna do some other things first. Same thing for the ear, if you feel like you really need to Get another coat of black on this part of the ear or even the inner part of the ear. Careful in that part because you got the fur around there. But go ahead and do that if needed. Had a little sip of my lemonade. It's looking really good. I'll see, I'll show you at the end what these two look like side by side. You'll see they're a little bit different from each other. Maybe they were like cousins. 
<laughs> so I'm going to now clean up the nose if needed. If you feel like if you kind of lost the shape of the like, sort of boat shape or bowl shape of the nose, now's a great time to come back in and clean that up. Make it a little bigger if needed. Sometimes what happens when you paint all the white and gray around it, it can end up getting smaller. So usually when I come back in to touch it up, I have to make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm gonna show you how, actually, let's wait. I was gonna show you how to draw the mouth, but I think uh, I wanna let that this area dry a little bit more. And then I wanna have us use our littlest brush to paint the mouth. So for now, let's forget about the mouth. We'll do it in a bit. I'm gonna touch up a little more inside here. And while you guys are finishing that up, if you need to paint black in here at all, maybe give a second coat through here, whether you use the biggest brush or the, the sponge brush, whatever you got there, dad brush, you can pop another coat of paint on there if needed to make it really opaque and black. Just be careful around where these beard hairs come down. So we don't wanna cover all of that hard work we did because it already looks so cool. We don't have to do it over. But if you end up having to, that's totally normal. I've had to do that a billion times in all the different paintings I've worked on. I have had so many do-overs. Because as you're learning, that's what you do. All right. So I'm going to wash my mom brush off. Mom is a busy brush during this whole painting. We use her for pretty much most of it. So I'll kind of swish mom brush across the bottom of the cup. And your water is pretty gray. You can change it, you can pause me and change it out if you want. I usually don't. I usually will use uh, tinted water throughout the whole painting unless absolutely necessary to change it out. But, and you can see when I dry my brush in the paper towel, it's got some pigment tint to it. it looks really light gray. So a lot of times I'll just kind of squeeze the towel around my brush and that helps knock off any excess grayish pigment. And we're gonna talk about colors. I'll show you how to, some tricks for mixing and some fun stuff. But let's have a look at this one. This one I went a little extra yesterday. I even gave it a, a little spot of blush, which is totally unnecessary. But sometimes I get going a little crazy and I like to show some extra things. Um, I also, the other thing I did is I gave this uh, panda some little freckles where the whiskers come out because I looked, I was, as I was filming, I was looking online and I see, yes, they do have, it looks like white whiskers, which wouldn't really show up against the white. So if you want to give the indication of little dots for the freckly part where the whiskers grow out, I'll show you how to do that later with the baby brush. Well, let's talk about the color. So this panda is like, a disco ball panda. And that's what I love about painting. You can use colors that you wouldn't necessarily see in nature. So maybe maybe this panda's like at a roller skating rink and they have a disco ball. And if you guys have ever seen a disco ball, they swirl around and there's a light shining on it and it casts all these rainbow colors all around. So we're gonna think of it that way. Your panda is roller skating at a disco because why not? So I'm gonna show you now how to mix some different colors. Right now our panda is really just black and white with a little gray. You can leave it like this if you wanna have like just kind of the all natural panda without the crazy colors. Some people like that and that's totally awesome. There's sometimes when I paint in this style, which is called monochromatic, you've got just the two colors going on together and that's totally cool, totally fine. It just depends on what you're feeling. So let's have a look. If we are gonna play with color, let's have a look at what we can do. So one of my favorite colors, this is my all-time favorite color right here. It's beautiful, I just love it. It's, it's called Bahama Blue. It's just a kind of a pale turquoise. Some people call it teal, but I, I think of it as turquoise. And this color alone is great, but I'll show you a trick. You can mix, pull some aside and pull some yellow aside and mix them together. And because we've got blue and yellow, it makes green. And the more yellow you add, the more of a limey green it'll be. The more of the turquoise you add, the more it's gonna be bordering on the turquoise green. So there, now I've taken two colors and I made three colors. And we could even, like if you were, depending on what you were working on, one thing I always like to show, I could mix white with that. And then you get a color, it's called seafoam green. 
which you can use for all kinds of different projects. This makes a great background color for different paint projects that you do. So I'm gonna wash the brush. So there, I've made one, two, three, four colors. You can add white to any of these. So I'm washing mom brush off, drying that black gray paint water. And let's see what happens when I mix this dark pink, which kind of looks like a raspberry smoothie, with yellow. So they make a color that I call, some people might call it orange. It's kind of more of a coral orange color. And you can decide if you pull more yellow in, it'll be lighter. If you pull more pink in, it's gonna be more of a darker. I kind of do just somewhere in between, maybe a little more yellow than pink. And this one too, let's see what it looks like when we add some white to it. Peach, we've got peach. So there, out of three colors, we've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. That's pretty cool. So one more color we're gonna mix. And I could keep going. I could show you more and more colors. One thing I wanna point out is uh, the turquoise, yellow, and pink are actually variations of the primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. So these are kind of like a sort of a reddish, sort of a bluish, and then of course yellow. If you mix all three of those together, you get kind of a brown. It's not, a, not the most pretty brown, but if you, for whatever reason, wanted some brown, go ahead and try it out. Or if you just wanna play around when you're done with your paint and see what colors you can make. Yes, those three, they turn pretty muddy when you mix them together and they make kind of a brownish color. So I wanna show you one other really pretty color you can make with a clean brush with the turquoise blue, Bahama blue is what it's called. I'll pop some down over here. And then I'm gonna scrape a little pink off. And some of you guys already know, when you mix red and blue, you get purple. Now these are different shades of red and blue. These are pink and turquoise. So we're gonna get a kind of a lavender color, which is really cool. And you can play around with it, whether you want more blue in it, more turquoise in it, or more pink. I do like a little more pink in it. I feel like at the times I've added more turquoise, it turns almost kind of grayish. And uh, yeah, so now I've got purple. And let's talk, let's talk about this. So now instead of just these one, two, three, blue, yellow, and pink colors, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight colors out of three colors, which I think is super cool. So, and you can add white to any of these and just keep exponentially adding and, and make different colors. If I add pink and white, well, a lot of you like this bubblegum pink, that's pretty fun. So there I've got yet another color to play with. And my brush is kind of polluting everything with different color. But I've got a, a good chunk of colors to work with to make my disco ball panda. I do have a an order that I put the colors on. And the reason I put them on in this specific order is to keep it from becoming too muddy. There was the, the first time I taught this to younger kids, um, I didn't really follow any order. I was just like, put whatever color you want, wherever you want. And a lot of kids ended up with a really muddy looking panda. So I thought, you know, let's play this right. Let's plan it out right. And we're gonna do colors in order so we don't end up with a super muddy brown <laughs> panda that looks like he's been playing in the mud. So I wanna start with clean mom brush. So I cleaned it off, dried it off. And I am going to start with just the plain turquoise. I don't need a lot of paint on the brush. We've already got our panda all filled in with white. So we know it's a panda, it's white fur. That's looking really dirty. And so I don't have a lot of paint on the brush. You can see there's very little. I want it to dry kind of fast, but I'm going to imagine like, let's pretend the disco ball is up here like a light bulb, it's, right now it's just blue. There's a light shining on it that's turning everything blue. So I'm going to think about that like, okay, there's some little bluish tints to the top edge of the panda's head. Not a lot, just a little. And then I might take it along here too. But sometimes I might skip an area and, and just put some slashes of that turquoise blue down in here. 
Maybe I'll go a little further and do some down in here. And maybe I'll put some along the top edge of the ear. So every time I add colors, I'm not adding very much at all. I don't want to forget the shoulder. I do try to get a little bit of each color here and there. So I just did a little tiny hint of that color on the shoulder. So right now our, our panda's in the blue light bulb phase. And then across the snout, we want to do, oops, I think I just dipped it. I did, look what I did. I dipped it in turquoise paint. Oops, I have done that so many times. Today I had paint all over my hands, trying to fill some paint bottles. So I'm gonna move the palette out of the way. So across the top of the snout, I do a slightly curved brush stroke every time I add color to it because I want to sort of indicate that, yes, this is a curved area. It's more three-dimensional. So I'll take the turquoise on my brush and just do some occasional little slight curves. You don't have to use a lot of paint here. There, I did just a little bit and now I'm ready to switch colors. So remember we had like what, eight colors or so? So, uh, you know, you don't have to cram a bunch of color when you're using one certain one. You may wanna leave room for other colors, unless you really like turquoise and you, you mainly want turquoise. Washing the brush. My water is so dirty. And now my next color order I'm gonna go with is the lime green. So that was when I mixed the yellow and turquoise together. And I'll just pop that in. It's just hanging out with the turquoise. We don't want to cover the turquoise. You might end up with some areas where you do brush over a turquoise bit of fur with green. That's okay. But we want to make sure that we're sort of keeping it on areas that are not painted with turquoise already. I kind of skip around a little bit while I'm painting. My brain just works that way. A little bit here on the shoulder. And then I want to make sure I get some on the snout too. The cool thing is, if you feel like you went a little overkill and suddenly your panda's nose is all green or all blue, let it dry a bit, work on some other area, and then clean your brush and come back with white and you can soften everything up. That's the cool part about acrylic paint. You can cover anything, you can start over. If I messed up this whole painting, I could paint the whole thing black and start again, do the whole panda again. I've done that a lot of times with different paintings. I've got a lot of paintings that are underneath other canvases. <laughs> and even they've done some tests on some of the old painters paintings like Vincent Van Gogh and Da Vinci and they found underneath there's other paintings, ones that they probably did and they were like, oh, I can't believe I painted that. <laughs> I've gotten so much better. <laughs> So now I washed my mom brush, dried her off, and the next color switch I'm gonna go to to keep it from turning too muddy is yellow. So you can see I'm going primarily from cool colors, and now this is my first really warm-ish color I'm putting on. So again, just like the lime green, you treat it like, this is just another color here. We're not covering up the other colors. We are playing around alongside the other colors. Down along the chin here, maybe a couple little pops along the shoulder. And then if you want, throw some stripes, some curved stripes on the panda snout. And I mean, you, you don't have to just keep it along the edges. If you wanna put some other colors a little further down on the face, that's okay. All right, I'm liking it so far. And I'm just gonna keep adding more and more color, but I wanna wash my brush in between and dry it off. My paper towel is getting pretty nasty. I'm going to get another one. I've done a lot of brush washing with this painting. And now to keep, again, keep the, the muddiness from becoming a little too crazy I'm going to go with the orange, the kind of one I called coral earlier. Got some Klingons on my brush. <laughs> so 
So coral, orange, whatever, whatever you see it as, or even the peach color would be fine. And I'm not going to use a whole lot of this color. I primarily want to keep it in areas where the blue is not, because over the blue, it's a little bit muddy. So I'll just slash some bit of color in there that's not painted over the blue. Maybe I'll try some peach. Do, 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 do. As I'm adding color, I am ending up going less and less every time I add more color to it. It doesn't really matter how you do it. This is your painting. You can honestly do it however you want. If you want a polka dot panda, you can make a polka dot panda. You can make it however you like it. So you don't necessarily have to do the colors I'm doing or the order I'm doing. I'm kind of showing you the order so that we don't get muddiness. But honestly, you can uh, make your panda the way you want it. And cool thing, once it's all dry, if you need to add more white, if you feel like, oh, I got too much color and you want to come back in with some white fur and soften all the color up, you can totally do that. So I'm going to next use pink. And I don't use a huge amount of pink because it's kind of darker. It's like a darker, brighter color than the others we put in here. So it's a little more like light touch is the right touch. I will show you guys how to make that blush spot. It's totally optional. It's not on the original painting that was on our website. But I sometimes like to show some extra stuff in the videos. It's fun. So I've got just a little bit of pink. Maybe I'll put a little on the top edge of the ear. I've kind of ignored that part for a while, so, which means it's nice and dry. So that's good. You can put colors on this part too. I've sort of apparently been avoiding that for whatever reason. And now I'm going to use the lavender. Again, light touch is the right touch. You don't need much. Start with a little. Maybe I'll add some lavender like I did on the one I showed you. I put some lavender right in here in the gray because I figured the lavender and gray would work really nicely together. And they do. I do like that. And then, you know, you can put some lavender. Maybe your, maybe your panda's wearing eyeshadow. Or there's just some some kind of color shading going on here. That looks good. I like the lavender like that. And then you guys are going to get to finger paint, finger paint next. If you're going to do the little blush spot, let me show you that. It's done with a very, very pale pink. So that is just white and the pink together, white and raspberry smoothie together. I mixed it right there. Very pale. You want it to be very pastel, very pale. And I'll show you what fun we get to do. So I'm going to take and dip my finger right in that pink. If you need to mix it first, mix it with your brush. Don't mix it with your finger. You will get wet paint on your finger, but this paint washes right off. Just don't touch any clothes or anything important while you've got wet paint on your finger. And I'm going to put that blush spot right about here. And I just swirl it around, let it get bigger and bigger and just dry off my finger. My finger is already dry. And I've got a little dry paint on my finger. Soap and some warm water will wash that right off. So there, I love that part so far. It looks really cute. What are we missing? What are we missing? I bet you guys know. The eye! And we're missing the mouth as well. And those we've saved for last. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at our work we've done so far. It looks great. I'm sure you guys have done an amazing job because kids usually rock this painting and do such a good job. Mom brush is going to get a nap now. She's worked really, really hard through this whole entire painting. So I'm washing the mom brush off. When you are done with your brushes, your water probably looks like mine. It's really gray unless you've changed it out. It's not very pretty. But what I like to do is these brushes, you treat them just like you wash your hair, just a little soap or shampoo and water. Soap is fine. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of us don't keep shampoo by our <laughs> kitchen sink, but just plain old soap and some warm water. What I do is I kind of swirl it around in my hand and then rinse it off and that helps a lot, but you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to fray your brush. So let's pick up the baby brush. So you might be using this little number six round. 
or you might have the number four round or you might have your own. It, either of these will do the job. Just a small round pointy brush is all you need. And this one has a nice sharp point because it's brand new. So a nice sharp point like that is awesome for doing detail work. Let's go ahead and paint the eyeball on first. And let me pull this over here. It looks like when I teach it in, in the studio at Van Gogh, I tell the students, let's think of this, instead of an eye, let's think of it like a soap bubble. So that's what it looks like. Like you've blown a bubble, you've got a little shine on the top and a tiny little shine on the bottom. And this is really, it's about the size of like a large marble or even like close in size to a quarter. So, I mean, if you have a quarter and you want to trace it, you can do that, but it will get paint on it. So I'm going to take and I'm going to dip the very tip of the bristles in the white. You can see I picked up just a tiny, tiny bit of white. I'm not going to push hard. We want to do very light pressure. And I'm just going to very lightly, so when you, when you press light, you get small, thin lines. And I'm just going to very lightly sketch out. First, I start with a half circle because I figure I can do the other half from there. And then I'm going to finish the other half. And mine ended up, I bet if I placed a quarter right there, it would probably be right about the exact size. Very light, light pressure. Feather light, as light as you can. That takes some practice, so don't worry if you don't get it the first time. If you mess up the eye, let it dry. Paint this area black, let that dry, and then start again. You could do that anytime. So now I want to turn this into what looks like a soap bubble. So I take my brush and right at the top, Top outer left corner of the eye, I'm gonna do a little swoop in white. And then I could leave it like that, but I never leave it like that. I always come back in and I do a little tiny dot down here, opposite that one. Super cute. Suddenly our panda can see after all this time of having a very dark area. <laughs> so while I've got the white on this little brush, I'll do a little shine across the top of it. It's in the black area of the nose. Think of it like the, their noses are like, probably like your cat or dog when the nose is always slightly wet. So it's gonna have a little shine just like the eyes do. And then I'm gonna wash my brush cause we're gonna, we're gonna paint the mouth on and we want that to be black. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then if you want to do the little freckles, you can do that too. And then we're going to be done. Okay. So I'm taking that brush, I cleaned it off, and then I'm going to sort of pinch those little bristles together to make it into a little point again. When you clean your brushes at the end of the night, when you're done, or day, when you're done painting, you can always do that, reshape it into a little point. It will dry that way, and then it will be perfect every time you paint. So I'm going to take and dip it in the very tip of the bristles in black. I picked up a tiny bit of black, just like I did when I did the eye with the white. And this, I'm going to do a straight line down here, just parallel the side of your canvas. It's only maybe about quarter inch long or half inch long is fine. And I'm going to make it curve up. So you can start at the outer corner and curve down to this, or you can curve up from there, whatever you like. I tend to like to go from the outer corner and curve down to meet this straight line. And then the other side needs to match, but it's gonna go off the side of the canvas because our bear is being shy, playing hide and seek, peekaboo, whatever it is. And then for the three little freckles, I just go Dot, real light, dot, there's two. And the third one is right out here. And if you have room to do them over here, you can do them there too. And this is adorable. I really love it. Really fun. Let's, let's see how different they look from each other before I have a sign it. They're pretty similar, but definitely different. You can see differences in like the, the distance between the eye and the nose. This one's got a little bit uh, shorter nose and a little fatter nose. And this one has maybe a tiny bit more of the mouth showing. So every time we paint them, because we're painting from scratch without something printed out on here, it ends up slightly different. And I love that. I think it's a really good thing. Now, if you want, if you feel like you want to go back and put more white here and there, like if this is dried and it's too gray for your liking and you feel like you want to go back, add a little white, but do leave some of the gray showing through to keep that like texture. So I'm going to show you some extra credit real quick and then we'll be done. If you want to be done now, 
and you don't want to do the extra credit, you can sign your painting. I use my baby brush and I always just put my initials in usually this corner on this painting. Um, you don't want to like sign a huge name because you, you want the focus to be on your panda. Your signature is important. It's very, very important because you're the artist and you did it yourself. But you want to keep it kind of small and off to the side so it's not grabbing all of the attention. So I'm going to show you my extra credit trick is stars. And we do this a lot in several different paintings. I use this technique for doing snowflakes too when we do winter paintings and Christmas paintings. We're going to use the baby brush, but we're not going to use the brush end. We're going to use the handle end. It works perfect. It works like a rubber stamp. I'm going to dip it in the white paint, poke it in, and then before I touch it to the canvas, I'm going to dot it a few times on my palette so that it makes the stars be a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to dot and dot and dot and dot and dot and dot. I figured this was kind of like a night scene. So we've got the stars out. Our little shy panda playing hide and seek or peekaboo out in the night. So cute. You can paint the Big Dipper if you know what that looks like. <laughs> Google it if you don't. Oh, I love the stars. So one of the things I'll try to do with stars is occasionally do some that are sort of clustered together and then have other areas where they're spread apart, then have other areas where they're clustered together. So that keeps it looking more natural. Not like anything on this painting is like supernatural. Obviously we don't have pandas running around with all these wild disco colors on them. But when I do stars, I do like to tell the students that you can keep from doing a perfect pattern by clustering little groups of stars together and then having others that are further apart. Almost done. A few more stars here and I will be done. Sometimes I'll feed off a big, bigger dot that's still wet. That makes it easy. <laughs> there. Super cool, super cute. I'm gonna sign it now. You get to choose whatever color you want to sign it with. Baby brush would be the best option here. Of course, since I love turquoise. Ah, I didn't press hard enough. I just do my initials and they've kind of just become a couple little loops over the years so that they're easy and fast because I have to sign so many paintings. But there we have it. There's our colorful panda. Hope you guys had fun painting it with me and uh, we'll be seeing you again because I'm going to post some other kid paintings. So hope you enjoyed painting with me and I hope you do it again. We have more videos coming up with the uh, kids paintings, but adults can paint any of these paintings. I really enjoy painting them. So uh, paint anytime you can and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks a lot guys. We'll see you later. <laughs>